Hey guys, it's Baby Bear, and I've been putting this video off for a really long time, but it is important to get out because if you're a new player especially, it is really hard to wrap your head around Challenge, the event. So if you're in America, you understand how early the Challenge event is. It's 6 a.m. my time, so it's not very fun. So grab a coffee and, and uh, check out all of the info that I'm going about to say. First of all, congratulations to all of the people who made it to the top 64. It is not an easy task to do. And the list came out from Ebony in our mail. This time they actually mailed out the C5 list, not the C1. And uh, congrats to everybody because it is not an easy task. They actually sent out an accidental prediction list so this kind of confirms my theory of what I thought, how they did the matchups for challenge. The matchups were just so crazy, right? We were up against 90 billion alliances. We were up against AOW, which is predicted to be number two. And the reason being is that I believe that they match us up based on a tier spend. So that's why the matchups were really unbalanced and weird at the very beginning stages. I think that they match up tier one first. And then they match up the tier ones with the three and four to make sure they guarantee that the tier ones advance to the next round for the top 64. And I think that once they fill up the top tier ones uh, spend people, then they go to tier two. And you'll notice that some people would get their matchups and other people wouldn't. And I think that those people that didn't get their matchups, they had to kind of wait and calculate out how they would match those up. And sometimes they would have to put tier two and tier two together with, you know, a three and four. So that's how I believe it happens. And maybe it's not a tier spend level, but maybe it's a, a, a overall alliance level. How rich is that alliance? So, um, but I do think it's spend. I think they can easily take people's IDs, calculate, you know, the, the amount that they have spent. And uh, I think they can easily do that with data and analytics. So that's just my theory because, you know, I'm in a C5 room. We all kind of compare our matchups and and I'm just trying to draw out the pattern. So obviously none of that is fact or based on truth, just theory and conjecture. So one thing I want to point out is a coin strike that is going on amongst all continents. And just here is another show of, you know, how Ebony works. These people on this server have been stuck in BOC for like five or six days and they haven't been able to get out. People are missing their challenge matchups because of this type of glitch and it's just so constant. So a lot of people are partaking in this coin strike and guys, I'm being completely transparent with you guys. I'm a YouTuber, so I feel like I should be able to, you know, be honest about this. I normally spend the normal 10 coupons each event so I usually get to about cake eight. And for this event, you'll see here that I have drastically dropped my spending. But I'm not going to say I'm not going to spend, right? I'm just drastically dropping what I have spent. Now for myself, I know that I've been really disappointed with the challenge matchups. So there was just no point. I mean, it was just kind of a pointless event. And that's why I'm making this video. I don't want any of you guys out there to waste your time and waste your expenses on trying to make this event without going into it with all of your knowledge intact. So I want to help you guys with that. So the challenge matchups were really bad and the lag was there again, not as bad as all stars, but we had all that all stars lag and we, ugh, I spent so much money on that event and it was really disappointing. All the scandals going on, the pink gems and our server had its own scandal with a pack loading hacker that Ebony didn't punish. So it seems like Ebony kind of doles out the punishments very unfairly and differently to each person. There are a lot of servers that get different perks, different items, different events. It's crazy how there is any quality from all the servers and it's just not the same game for everybody. I think this coin strike will be different because the whales are actually buying in and participating in it. And really, that is going to be the biggest hit in revenue is seeing the major spenders cutting back or not spending or leaving the game. That's going to be a big hit. But then to add on the medium spenders and low spenders, if everybody is actually doing that, then that will show more impact. And I know people are suspect about people still spending, but look, guys, 
you can complete these events. You can spend on these events with your inventory if you're a consistent spender. I have had I have so much stuff in my inventory that I'm able to still partake in like these type of events and uh it you know, it'll obviously go away if I stop spending completely, but it's just one of those things where I think you have to see the impact of it over time and not just right away, but you know, it's totally up to you guys. Challenge, only the top 64 alliance has made it. So the people that didn't make it, I mean, you really have no reason to spend right now. Uh, All-Stars qualifiers, I think, is going to be in a couple of weeks. So luckily, we're pushing Cotez and PP for those positions for All-Stars. So I'm kind of in a good place right now where I don't really need to spend. I'm not going to be doing the events. And honestly, the less that I spend, the less time I spend on this game. It really does go together. And uh, yeah, that's just that's where I'm at. And the model of this game is if you stop spending now but then start spending your money six or seven months later, you're actually going to catch up much faster to the newest meta stats than if you try to do it consistently every month. And I know that sounds weird, but just think of the $80,000 accounts that start in C1 and then now starting in C5 or 6, whenever C6 comes out, they're going to be able to get those same stats for much, much less money. It's just the way these models are built and they really always try to go after the new server and the new money. So let's get back to the topic of what this video is about. And you'll see here, my Alliance made 198 out of 256. So we didn't do so well. <laughs> um, just remember our Alliance is 14 billion power. So we are a very small Alliance. I am proud of us being able to get to the majors. However, what I have done things differently now knowing how to actually play the all-star challenge because i didn't know prior i had no idea and now being in it now i get it now i understand the objective now i understand the point and now i understand why people are always like why don't you have troops and also understand why people are always so obsessed about being in a top alliance so i will break that down for people that don't know so being in the top 256 is a big task it does mean that your alliance has to make certain amount of points to be able to get to this round now there is a bunch of people in elite there's a bunch of people in juniors and really what people are fighting for is for this camelot castle for the alliance they're trying to fight for the subsidies and Everyone to top 100 gets the frame, the avatar frame, which I think everyone should get it. I just think that give people a break. We spent so much to get to this point. We all should get a frame, but only the top 100 get that. And then everybody from 100 to 256 only get a flag. So great. We got a flag out of this event, but we got a lot less prizes because we were consistently in like third or fourth place. So we didn't get as many ruby boxes as if we played elite and we scored top one all the time. So if you're competitive, you have to understand that maybe you being a big player works for SVS. Maybe you can carry SVSs. Maybe you can carry, you know, players in BOC and BOG for normal events. But when it comes to the challenge, you have to be on a team. This is not a solo event. This is the most important thing to come away from this video is that challenge is a super team alliance building event. This is a strategy that you have to play all year round to build the best players, the biggest players, and get them all in one alliance. Doesn't mean you have to be all in the same alliance the whole time. I'm sure there's lots of egos out there. But what I'm saying is when it comes to challenge for the qualifying rounds and for the actual round rounds, you need to be in a super alliance and you need to have troops for this because one big player is not going to be able to carry the rest of the team. And if there's a lot of big players on there, but you guys don't have the capacity to do rallies consistently, you're not going to be able to carry the team. So it really is important for everyone to understand this, this event is based on your team. So now I'm a planner and I brought this up in January 2023. I wanted to start planning for challenge majors, but 
I was only going on information given to me. And this information to me was good. I didn't know enough to be like, hey, this is, you know, to argue the point that we should have two alliances, one alliance, whatever it is. All I knew was this is the information and it did not click to me until we actually got into majors. So again, wanting to pass this on, it might not make sense to you if you have a couple of big alliances on your server and everybody is trying to make it with their own alliance. Great. However, if you're in a smaller alliance, like our alliance was 14 billion power, it makes sense to get your bigs together with your other bigs and to make a super alliance and maybe, you know, have some of the people from the the other alliance go to the other alliance so that they can compete in elite league and you guys can compete in the major league. That is probably the best thing that you can do on a smaller server or if you have a smaller alliance on your server and the information here was that if you qualify in the top 100 in BOC, you would move on. But I think Ebony changed it to top 256. And I think they're just doing that to get more people spending and more people in the majors, which is fine. However, I will be honest with you. If you're not in the top 100 in the major challenge, it's not worth it. It really isn't. All you're getting is a flag. You will always be guaranteed to get your asses kicked guarantee if you're in a smaller alliance so if you're i saw even like five billion alliances make it and it's cool like I, I have so much respect for the people that make it on that size power however you're not going to be really getting anything out of the event right you're just going to be outmatched you're gonna maybe get in a couple of hits and it might be fun a little bit but you're not going to actually be getting the real competition whereas and if you played on elite you could definitely get first place each round and you'll have the competition and you'll be matched with you know your own ability and capability the thing is uh learning how these other alliances work is a good experience right like i think i would go through that humiliation one time but definitely the next time we play challenge it's either we're going to have to just play elite league or we're going to have to merge some people together to make a super alliance and i think that's probably the direction we're going to go um i think a lot of people want to play competitively but they're just kind of you know held back or or stagnant and so they just need a little bit of a push from from some players and i do think that one thing that I have noticed is there's a lot of smaller players that are R4s that tend to hold the bigger players back. And a lot of times they'll veil it with like, oh, we have to be equal and and the small players need to be able to play challenge too. And, and guys, like, I'm sorry, I love small players. I love all players, actually. But you can't be holding back people against events like this this is an event meant for bigger players to play and obviously smaller players if they're good scouters if they're good at ghosting troops and they're great at reading scouts those people also should be included in the majors it's just that you need to have the right team and i would rather have somebody who's 300 million power that can read scouts and and ghost out and give me all the information that i need when i need it than somebody who's a billion power that never PVPs and, and you know, just is like there and they don't know how to join a rally and they're always a liability. So you have to make sure that you're choosing the right team as well. So it isn't just based on power, but I will say that if you guys care about your alliance and alliance growth and your bigs, make sure you support them in these events. These are the events for them. And it just, it sucks to me to see like wasted potential. You know, there's a lot of players on our server that have so much potential, but they get held back a lot by that mentality. And it's kind of like, you know, I get it. I get it if you want to be a desperate housewife and you need attention, great. But you know what? Get that attention by becoming a good player. And I can't even tell you the amount of boyfriends that Sapphire has gotten every BOC. She always gets like this new big player that messages her because she's so good in PvP. It just is so funny. And I really want to motivate these players to really understand like how much our server is being held back by these types of mentalities. And it's not just the women. Obviously, there's guys too that think they know everything and 
they don't, you know, and unless you're playing at that higher level, unless you're talking to other players in C1, C2, and, you know, we have like a C5 group, you're not going to be able to to carry a server to the next level if you're just there to always, you know, uh, not be helpful. And so sometimes it might seem aggressive or it might seem like bigger players are trying to take over things. And that's not the case. It's just that it's the game. And a lot of times when people spend money, our purpose of the game is to make these competitions. That's why this game is made. And I get it. There's different types of players. There's social players. There's competitive players. There's people that barely log on. There's people that just play to play the puzzles. But really, when it comes down to it, the people that actually are playing for the competitions in the game, it's important to keep them able to participate in these events. Otherwise, the server is not going to go anywhere. And when the bigs go away, when the spenders go away, the server is going to get dead. And sure, you know, maybe some players are going to like that because now they're in power. Um, but does it really put them on the map as in terms of the whole game? No. So there's a lot of people that play this game to be outside of just the server. And me doing YouTube, of course, like, I meet so many people from other servers and so I understand the point of view from the outside but a lot of people who just stay to themselves or stay to their own alliance or inside their server really don't understand why the big players are pushing these types of things and it's not to try to take over or or you know belittle other people it's so that we can compete in the events. And obviously, the more that we can compete in events, you get the big castle. You know, your alliance gets that big castle. And then you get to benefit from those boosts. It just is a constant cycle. And what I really like about Challenge is that it is a team event. It is not something where it's just one person kind of carrying people. It has to be all the players really putting in 100%. So... That is kind of really why I wanted to make this video because I think uh, me knowing that for a year I did not understand what challenge was. I didn't understand the whole points of any of these events for a year. And being able to go to All-Stars, I got to learn and, and meet so many different people. I am lucky to be friends with a lot of people from C1 and C2. And obviously, I get to learn from like the best players on this game. And I feel so lucky but I also want to spread that knowledge in a way that, you know, I'm not going to tell everybody how to play each technique or how to do this and that. But I do want people to understand the overall concept of challenge is to make it a team game and a super alliance if you can. So while we're on this battle, I'm slowing this down to show you guys how I unghosted and was sending a march attack to the tower, to that hospital. And while I was doing that, it was preparing. You see how it got stuck and I got hit at the same time. So I lost that march and it just sucks because, again, it's just typical Ebony. They just can't, they can't handle me unghosting, sending an attack march, and then getting marched on. It just, it can't handle it. So it just sticks. And so I definitely blame the lag on this game. And it was really prevalent on the first one and the third one and the fourth one a little bit. Uh, the fourth one wasn't actually that bad for me, but I do know that other people on my team did get stuck in, uh, in some camps. So that was the other thing, too, is normally I would be playing cat and mouse on some of these buildings and I just I couldn't do it because I would get marches stuck in and I needed to make sure marches were available to hit other other towers and other players so that is kind of the gist of these battles on challenge nothing exciting you definitely want to be on voice chat you definitely want to have your team of rally members all you know grouped together and I obviously saw on most of the successful teams are the ones that had the rally crews and they had massive, massive troops so that they were very hard to solo. They could only be taken out with rallies. So that is also where I learned that the troops are so important for battlefields. 
Now, I also play this game for other means like SVS and other things. So for me, I'm still not ready to build a lot of troops yet, but I'm getting to that point after the T-15 uh, for ground and for cav, then yes, I will move on to the T-1s and, you know, building up the trap layers. But that all just comes in with time and I can do that while I'm not really spending that much, you know, building troops out, that's going to be uh, pretty easy. I have a lot of speeds to do that on. So just trying to do whatever I can. And as you'll see here, I'm playing uh, till the end. I am, I'm not a troop saver. So I'm obviously going to kill off all my troops. And you're going to see here at the very end, this is important to look at the strategy. So if we were big spenders in my alliance, we would be wanting to target the number one uh, alliance. So as you saw in my gameplay, you saw me just hitting the dog alliance because they were the alliance that had the most troops, but they're also first place. Now, if we were major spenders in this alliance and we had the opportunity to advance to the next round then we would have just really went ham on the dog alliance the first one and just kept hitting them while other people would hit out mbn from all buildings we wouldn't risk rallying them i don't even think they had that much troops but if they did have troops we wouldn't want to rally that team to give them points so trying to keep them out of buildings to accrue more points and to kind of avoid losing points on them would be important if we were trying to be competitive and not hitting the last place and second place is a good thing to do when you're in third trying to go to second if you're in last place you obviously don't want to hit third place because you want to be able to surpass them so go after second and first if you're in first place i mean they were so far ahead on points really i mean they should definitely make sure to kick nbn out of buildings but you know their their whole goal was to go after third and fourth they were definitely after uh me for a long time but uh i unfortunately don't give them many points because i ghost out so this MBN alliance, I think Phoenixville was pretty much like their biggest player. And since they were already in second place, it seems like they weren't pushing too hard on this competition because they must have placed okay in the first two rounds. So probably they were also conserving their speed ups. It didn't seem like there was a lot of action going on um, between those two alliances. But just in general, just understand your placement and understand that this is an SVS. So your points that you make don't go negative. So sometimes if you're, you know, a spender and you can reheal, you have millions of speed ups. That's why they say battle of challenge and all stars is, is the game of healing speeds, because really you could just keep healing over and over again to get the points that you need. And I don't recommend doing that obviously, because you want to play this game for the long haul and it just gets really expensive doing that way. So if you want to be successful in this event without breaking the bank, if you're playing solo, definitely you have to create a super alliance team, guys. I can't stress that enough and learn from my mistakes, learn from my failures. And honestly, this is, I'm never going to go through that experience again. Like I'm really competitive and just being in a matchup that's kind of impossible I mean, this wasn't an impossible match, but we just didn't have the rally team for it. It just, it sucks, you know? So go on voice chat, practice playing with your team because that only is going to help you practice for all stars. You know, being able to be fast and join rallies quickly, that's going to train you to get to that next level. So anyways, I hope you guys got some value out of this. I know it's just kind of an abstract video, but really at the end of the day, it's all about making a team for challenge. And I know there's a coin strike going on, but if you're going to spend, use the Amazon app. There's other apps out there. Just don't spend full price on these purchases and don't get compromised. So I have the links for the Amazon coins, but also my coffee, all of my coffee stuff, my Keurig, everything also in the the links below if you want to check that out. I just posted all the scores from the four challenges that I participated in. I just think it goes to show how much potential that 
you know, if you're one of the only bigs in your alliance, or if you only have a small number of bigs in your alliance, your potential is being untapped. So make a team, make a super team, make your game go further. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you later. Bye.